Hola, ¿qué tal? Mi nombre es María. Y mi nombre es Cody. Y hoy estamos en las calles de Bogotá porque hoy es el examen de Cody. Vamos a ver qué tan bueno es su español desde que empezó a estudiar hace tres meses conmigo. La idea es que vamos a hablar con diferentes personas y vamos a ver qué piensan ellos del nivel de español de Cody. Ellos le van a dar una nota de 0 a 5, siendo 5 la nota más alta y 0 la nota más baja. Entonces, si tú quieres ver las clases que hemos hecho, revisa el enlace que puse en la descripción de abajo. ¿Y estás listo? Yeah, let's do it. Empecemos. How are you feeling, Cody? Ah, uh, I'm a little nervous. Uh, we came out here yesterday and I actually got really sunburned. That's why I'm wearing the hat. But uh Yeah, I'm a little nervous. We'll see how it goes though, but I've got a good teacher, so uh, I think it's going to be okay. So the first test Cody had to do was to introduce himself to a stranger. How did it go? Uh, well, so story behind this is the first one we did was pretty bad, which is the one you're going to see, because uh, I was really, really nervous. We did another one and actually I did a lot better, but we forgot to hit record on the video. It's at the end if you want to check it out and listen, because that one I did really well and didn't sound so much so like an idiot. But I think I did okay. Um, I got asked a few questions I didn't really understand, but I managed to stumble my way through it. Let's watch. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Hola, bien. ¿Cómo estás? Bien, gracias. Uh, ¿Cómo se llama? José. Me llamo Cody. Uh, ¿Cuál es tu uh, música favorita? Me gusta el vallenato mucho. ¿Y la tuya? Um, me gust, mi, mi, gust, <laughs> mi música favorita es electrónica. ¿Electrónica? Sí, wow, electrónica. ¡Wow! ¡Súper! <laughs> ¿Y tu comida favorita cuál es? Um, mi favorita comida es, um, no sé, um, arroz. Uh, ¿Cuál es tu comida favorita? El pescado. Me encanta el pescado. ¿Y dónde vives? Uh, vivo en uh, Nashville. ¿Y tú? ¿Dónde vives? En Bogotá. Ah, bueno. ¿Y qué haces de pasatiempo? Uh. Um, me... Uf. I don't know that one. Uh, me gusta... Me gusta ver videos. Ok, videos, bien, bien. Sí, qué bueno. Um, uh, no más. So, after this test, I think you did very well in general, but obviously you had some mistakes, yes? So, <laughs> the first mistake you made was, well, it's not really a mistake, but it's something that anybody can, anybody who's learning a language can easily do, especially in Spanish, because we have the difference between formal you and informal you. So you started saying uh, the informal you, you asked him, ¿Cómo estás? That's informal. And then with the next question you asked, ¿Cómo se llama? That's formal. Mm. So you went from formal to informal. Which, I mean, it's okay because you're learning Spanish and everything, but it sounds weird when you're actually speaking to a person. So try to stick. If you're speaking with, um, with like the formal type of language, stick with it. Or if you're using the informal one, stick with it, okay? Don't, don't jump from one to, it, to the other, that sounds weird. Okay, the other little mistake you made is, uh, mi música favorita es... I need to switch it, yeah. No, no. Mi música favorita es electrónica. Mm -hmm. Legal mistake, you were missing the article. Mi música favorita es la electrónica. Mm -hmm. La salsa, la bachata, I don't know, okay? Oh, yeah. And the other little, little mistake was mi favorita comida. Mi comida favorita. Sí. It's not arroz, pero... Nah. I was nervous, so that was the first thing that came out. Uh, yeah, so in Spanish, uh, it's the opposite of English. So you don't say my favorite food. You will say mi comida favorita, my food favorite, okay? Something like that, yeah. okay? And, well, those are the little three mistakes you made. And then he, uh, the other guy, he mentioned a word. He said, pasatiempo. ¿Qué es pasatiempo? So that's, uh, what do you do to pass the time? I knew that, but I wasn't sure how to answer the question. Well, pasatiempo is actually hobby. 
Oh, well, there you go. I'm What's wrong. What's your hobby? <laughs> you didn't know that word, okay. but, but you managed it very well. You, uh, you responded, you answered, so that was cool. And so we also actually ended up not recording the grade he gave me. Um, it's in the other video, but what grade would you give me? Well, taking into account all, the, all those little mistakes... ¿Cuál es mi nota? ¿Cuál es tu nota? Mm, I would actually give you a four because you managed to introduce yourself and ask questions, uh, ask and answer questions to a stranger and that's actually very good. You, you gotta communicate, you know, and you were able to communicate and be understood and that's a big deal for a basic student. Okay. So good job. Four. Okay, so up next it's going to be um, big numbers like prices and things like that. So in this uh, next video, um, somebody's asking me prices in a sales paper. And yeah, anything else? Nothing. Let's watch. All right. Hola, Cody. ¿Cómo estás? Bien, bien. ¿Cómo estás? Bien, gracias. Eh, ¿Me podrías hacer un favor? Sí, sí. Mira, ¿me puedes ayudar a decirme qué precio tiene este aceite gourmet? Um, es, uh, ah, let's see, treinta y cinco mil, um, novecientos noventa. Treinta y cinco mil novecientos noventa. Sí. Ah, bueno. A ver, para que más me alcanza. Mm. ¿Qué precio tiene este atún? Uh, el atún es, uh, quince mil 990. 15,990. Sí. Muy buen precio. Vamos a ver, vamos a ver, a ver, voy a comprarme. Mm, este juego de sábanas, Cody, mira, qué bonito. Sí. ¿Qué precio tiene? Um, mil. Um, Ciento, ciento nueve mil novecientos. ¿Ciento nueve mil novecientos? Sí. No nos alcanza, Cody. No. No, no nos alcanza. Uh, ¿cuál, ¿Cuál es uh, mi nota? Eh, tu nota, pues te voy a poner un cuatro ocho porque no, hici, no dijiste bien el novecientos. Ah, que decir no, 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 no va, no va cientos. Novecientos. Ah, sí, sí. So, prices, big numbers. Yeah, I knew, I'm just going to say, I knew I was making a mistake because I knew that Nueve wasn't right, but I could not remember Nove to save my life. Man, you love that number. You say Nuevecientos, Nuevecientos. And you even, you even made that mistake when I was actually teaching you in the lesson. Yeah. Oh, and you know what's the funniest thing? That she was correcting you. Like, every time she was asking you, she told you, it's novecientos whatever, and then you kept on saying nuevecientos, and I was like, no, Cody, what happened? <laughs> I was nervous. I mean, it's it's very uh, it's nerve wracking to talk to somebody who's fluent in the language, and you feel it's intimidating. Well, yeah, I understand. I mean, I remember when I started speaking English to you know to a foreigner. That was really scary, so I understand you. But yes, that was really the little mistake you made, the only mistake you made um, when telling or when saying big numbers. So yeah, that's it. And also she said, she asked this question. ¿Qué precio tiene? ¿Qué precio tiene? It's also another way to ask ¿Cuánto cuesta? So I remember I told you ¿Cuánto cuesta? Mm -hmm. I don't think we ever saw mm, no. ¿Qué precio tiene? But, ¿qué precio tiene? is like, what price does it have? ¿Cuánto cuesta? How much is it? So you can use either one. Okay, so next up is going to be uh, a lot of reading, like signs, and uh, also reading like uh, little sections out of a book. So uh, let's take a look at that now. Let's watch. So now let's try reading another sign here. Uh, we have a, uh, a warning sign, it looks like. So it's... Señor visitante, por favor, cerra su vehículo y active su alarma. El centro comercial no se hace responsible por orto y o perdida de objetos en esta zona. Atención administración. Let's see how Maria reads it here. 
Ok, así se lee en español. Atención. Señor visitante, por favor cierre su vehículo y active su alarma. El centro comercial no se hace responsable por hurto y o pérdida de objetos en esta zona. Esta, esto se lee atentamente. Es una abreviación. Atentamente, administración. All right, so obviously I messed up a little. So Maria, ¿cuál es tu mi nota? ¿Cuál es mi, cuál es mi nota? Tres. That's terrible. De cero a cinco, tres. <laughs> On to the next one. Había un vez un hombre que vivía en Buenos Aires y estaba muy contento porque era un hombre sa sano y trabajador. Uh, was it? ¿Cuál es, cuál, es, uh, mi, ¿Cuál es mi nota? Un cuatro. ¿Cuatro? Oh, sí. Bien. 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 Uh, ¿Tú lees uh, también? Eh, ¿Leo? Sí, claro. Leo, qué pena. <risa> Listo, entonces. Había una vez un hombre que vivía en Buenos Aires y estaba muy contento porque era un hombre sano y trabajador. Ok, so how was that? Well, that wasn't bad at all. You made mistakes, like reading, like pronunciation mistakes, like things that we had already gone through, Cody. That was our first lesson. <laughs> Do I make you nervous? Uh, I mean, it's just, uh, yeah, I don't okay. know. I was... <laughs> I knew I knew some of it, but man, like sometimes my brain just doesn't work here. So. Okay, so let's go through the mistakes you made. Uh, vehículo, vehículo. Mm -hmm. What's the mistake there? Well, you in Spanish you don't pronounce the letter H under any circumstance. You don't pronounce the letter H, so you actually say vehículo, vehículo. Okay, no vehículo. Mm -hmm. La siguiente or the next one, responsible. Mm. It's actually responsable. You can watch mm. it in the video, okay? Well, after I read it. The next mistake you made was... Yeah. Ob objetos. Yeah, you I said, said objects. Yeah, yeah. You said objetos. But the letter J in Spanish, remember you pronounce it like... <sighs> like a tired dog, remember? Mm -hmm. <laughs> objetos. And the next one was the little abbreviation. A-T-T-N. Mm -hmm. um, actually, that's, that's atentamente. I said attention. Yes, yeah. because in English it's like attention. Mm -hmm. no? like yeah. Atentamente. Okay. And so how was when I uh, did the reading of the little passage from the book? Oh yes. Then we went and asked someone like this guy uh, who who was just passing by, and you read for him. You actually said había un vez. Había una vez. It's the right way to say it. Había una vez is the way you say. Once upon a time, like when you start a story. Había una, in feminine, mm -hmm. había una vez. So once upon a time. Mm -hmm. And you said había un vez. Ah. Uh. Mm. Okay. El siguiente, the next mistake you made was, you said un hombre que bebía. Mm -hmm. Bebía is to drink. There was a man who drank, you mm -hmm. said. But uh. it was actually a man who lived. <laughs> so it's like, is, is the guy a drunk guy? You made him look like a drunk guy when you said, Había una vez un hombre que bebía. It's my, my version of the story. Yes, but it's actually un hombre que vivía. A man who lived. Okay. Okay. And then this, this next mistake is a very common mistake. You can, uh, maybe you also make it. Um, you confuse hombre with hambre. Hambre is hungry. Hambre, I'm yeah. hungry. Hambre, hombre. Mm -hmm. Man, mm -hmm. hombre, okay? Okay, and so next up it's going to be dates and times. So we're going to read some dates and times, some signs we found around the city. So let's take a look. En una de nuestras clases aprendimos a decir la hora. Uh, Cody, ¿a qué hora reciben la mercancía? Uh, a las seis y media, o a las seis y treinta. Muy bien. Sin excepción. No exceptions. Okay, so let's try seeing what hours this place is open. So it's de lunes a jueves de ocho y una. I don't know.
Okay, so how was that? Well, that was pretty good. Actually, you didn't really make big mistakes or anything like that. Um, in the first part, when I asked you, when I asked you what time do they deliver the product or something something like that, mm -hmm. I asked you a qué hora. Remember, guys, when someone asks you a qué hora and they are talking about an event or something that happens continuously, like in this situation, your response should be a las. A qué hora? A las. Mm -hmm. And you said it. You said a las seis y media. You actually gave me the two options. You said mm -hmm. A las seis y media o a las seis y treinta. So both options are correct. But I did mess up that. I said or, not o. Yeah, you said it in English. Yeah, I said it in English, so. Well, but that's not a big deal. And then um, in the next part when we were reading the sign from the door, the opening times from the business, um, a qué hora abren? Or, you know, um, I want to know from what time to what time they are open. You said... Um, ocho y una. Mm -hmm. When you want to talk about the times or the opening times from for a business or for for an event or for whatever, you say from whatever time to whatever time. In Spanish, you would have to say de ocho a una. So it's de from a to. Okay, de ocho a una. That was a mistake you made. But in the other in the other exercise, you did it well, so that was good. Okay, so is that it? Yeah. All right. So up next is the last part of my test, and it's going to be asking someone about their birthday. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's take a look. ¿Cuándo es tu cumpleaños? Mi cumpleaños el 21 de julio. When? Y el tuyo? Tu cumpleaños cuándo es? Uh, mi cumpleaños es 20, er, 19 de octubre. Uh, uh, ¿cuál, es, cuál, ¿Cuál es mi nota? ¿Tu nota? ¿De 1 a 10? De 1 a 5. ¿De 1 a 5? Un 5. Ah, gracias. <laughs> okay, so how was that? That was good as well. No problem. You asked, the, you asked the question and you answered pretty well. The only little mistake you made or maybe just something you missed was uh, an article, a little article. When someone asks you for your birthday, you need to say, uh, mi cumpleaños es el, es el, el 2 de enero, de el okay. 19 de octubre. And you said, mi cumpleaños es 19 de octubre. You were missing that little article there. Ah, okay. I also almost said the wrong day as well. I got confused. And I had a lot of trouble with this cual es mi nota. That was totally new for me and I kept forgetting it. So that's why you see me struggling so much whenever I had to ask them because I was trying to think of what I actually had to say for the questions. And then when it was done, I was like, oh man, what was that word, that phrase I had to say? So anyway. But the lady was very generous. She gave you a five. <laughs> yes. So. Um, I would have given you a four, 4.5. You're a tough teacher. Yes. Okay, let's uh, wrap it up. Maria, um, tell me, what do you think? How, how, how do you think I did overall? Well, I'm going to give you my real opinion, my honest opinion. I think you did very well because for any language learner, one of the biggest fears is to actually speak and not even to speak, to actually speak to a native speaker of the language they are learning. That's really scary. Yeah. So that's a big deal and to me, you did very well. Um, Yes, you made a lot of mistakes, little mistakes, but you were able to communicate and I think that's the main that's the main thing. If you are able to communicate, if you are able to be understood and understand what other people tell you, even if you make little mistakes as a beginner, it's not a big deal. I think it's important to correct mistakes as you make them, as you improve in your language learning process, but um, it's a stage, it, it's gonna happen, you're gonna make mistakes and that shouldn't stop you from actually speaking the language whenever you have the opportunity. And this was a big opportunity for you to actually speak and to actually use what we have learned. Mm -hmm. So you did very well. And I will say this, this is the first time that I've been in Colombia that I have actually been able to communicate with people. And yes, I say the wrong thing quite a bit, but people actually understand me, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool that, uh, I mean, the other times I've been here and you know, Nobody understood anything. It was really stressful. And this time people finally understand and I can actually communicate. 
Granted, it's still basic, but it's still pretty awesome. And you know what? It's very cool that people are very appreciative when you actually try to speak their language and not the other way around. Like when people actually see you making an effort, at least here in Colombia, to speak Spanish, they help you and they, they make an effort to understand you and talk to you. And actually, they actually teach you words. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, people have been very forgiving. Like when I try to speak to them and they don't understand what I'm saying, that, or if they're trying to tell me something and I don't understand, they'll break it down into smaller words that maybe I do know, and it makes it way easier for me to kind of figure out what's going on. So that's been pretty cool as well. So what grade do you think you deserve? Um, I think I'm a solid three, I would think, uh, out of five. I mean, I feel like I'm truly basic now, and it's really surprising how much I do understand now. Uh, it's pretty cool. You know, it's crazy to think how hard we are with, with ourselves. You said you would, give, you would give yourself a three. I would give you like a four. Wow, well, that, you're very generous. Thank you. Mm. So, hey, in, in the comments, let me know um, what you think of my Spanish. What, what would you give me? Zero to, uh, to five. Be nice. Now let's talk about, so we've got some cool stuff coming up. Yes. Um, we actually interviewed some people, a bunch of people, so that's coming up, so it's going to be pretty cool. Um, we interviewed uh, a group of people from Chile. Yes. That's, yeah, they're actually uh, traveling around, where, all Latin America? Like all over Latin America, and you know what, it's very interesting. I really like this interview because a lot of people say that the Chilean accent is the hardest one to understand, but I am, I am really excited to show you that interview and see what, what you guys think about their accent and about the way they speak Spanish. So I don't know. That's so, going to be interesting. Yeah, and it's five different people, so you'll get like a good variety of, you know, different, you know, men, women, you know, kind of accents. Um, or yeah. how they talk, I guess. Yeah. Uh, also, we've interviewed a few more people from Colombia. And uh, yeah, so that's all coming in the future. And then when we get back to the States, it's going to be the second, I guess, we'll call it season of Zero to Fluency, which is going to be all in Spanish. Yes, no more English. No more English. <laughs> so... Anyway, anything else? That's it. All right, so until the next video. Ciao. Ciao. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Hola, bien. ¿Y tú cómo estás? Ah, bien, gracias. Uh, ¿Cómo se llama? José Gómez. ¿Y tú cómo te llamas? Uh, me llamo Cody. Uh, ¿Cuál es tu color favorito? El negro. Ah. ¿Y tu color favorito cuál es? Um, mi color favorito es uh, azul. Uh, ¿Cuál es uh, tu... Música favorita. Ah, el vallenato, me encanta, okay. claro. Y vos por ser gringo, me imagino que... Um, mi, uh, mi música favorita es uh, electrónica. ¿Electrónica? Uh, oh. electrónica sí. Wow, bien. Sí, sí, sí. ¿Y dónde vives? Uh, vivo en uh, Nashville. Uh, ¿Y tú dónde vives? Yo vivo en Bogotá. Ah, Nashville, ¿frío o calor? Uh, Nashville, Nashville es uh, color y poco frío también. Um, sí. ¿Cuál es uh, mi nota? Bueno, estuviste bien. Voy a darte un 4-5. Ah, gracias, gracias, gracias. Bien. Ok, chao. Chao.